Hey everybody, this is Mrs. KJ. My full name is Mrs. Kenetter Johnson, but that's way too long. So I go by Mrs. KJ, and this is the first video for our chemistry class. So this is our 1.01 semester introduction for applied chemistry. At MNBA, we teach six different levels of chemistry. So if your teacher asks you which chemistry class you're in, you are in applied chemistry. And just because it takes us a few weeks to get to know everyone. So um, you'll see when you log into your classes that it's Psi 302 AX App Chemistry for Applied Chemistry. Or there's another section because usually we have more than one teacher. And this year it's also Miss R or Miss Robelia. And she is, for the fall of 2015 anyways, teaching Psi 302 AX Applied Chemistry X. So it's just a way that we can divide students up. On your report card, it's going to say Psi 301A, Applied Chemistry. So just kind of the starting stuff so you know. If you forget all this, it's really not important. Just know that you're in Applied Chemistry, and you will be hearing a lot from me, Mrs. KJ, and you may possibly also be hearing from Ms. R, Ms. Robelia. First things first. The cold hard facts. The state of Minnesota requires all high school students to complete a year of chemistry to graduate. So this is not an MNVA thing. This is not a Twin City thing. This is the entire state of Minnesota needs to be doing a full year of chemistry. And that includes a list of standards, which you can find in the syllabus that the state of Minnesota requires. So if you're thinking, why is she making us do this? You can talk to your legislatures at the state of Minnesota. <laughs> and we'll talk about why we're learning different things along the way as well. And just so that you know, this class can be very hard. However, every single person who did the work last year passed the class. Here's the thing. You need to ask for help. That's the big thing when you get stuck. You need to ask for help because you do need to do all the work. And this is like a math class in that it builds. So you can't just skip unit one and go to unit two. You have to do every lesson in order. And that way you'll learn everything the best. And because what you learn in unit one, you still need to know in May at the end of the year. So it's very important that you take your time to learn everything. Do everything that is listed for you to do. So this class is set up differently than the other K-12 classes um, because I've spent a lot of time reworking it to make this the best possible class. And so that means that we have a video at the beginning. Then there is a worksheet. You check your own answers, which is really awesome when you think about it because you don't have to wait for me. You can be doing this at 2 o'clock in the morning, do your worksheet, and instantly check your answers. And the key to that is that you know whether, well, okay, I got them all right, I'm fine, take the quiz, check how I did on the quiz, or you do the worksheet and you're like, whoa, I messed that up. Oh, okay, I know what to do. I'll try it a little bit later to make sure I understand it. And then, yep, I redid the worksheet without looking at the answers. I did good. Now I'm ready for the quiz. Or, oh my goodness, I'm totally lost. Come see your teacher. Okay? So there's also labs. And you come live to have Mrs. KJ start them with the class or watch the recording. So labs are started during a Class Connect. And we also have Test Review Class Connects. And those are the only way to get extra credit. That being said, there will be a few other random things that I give to the class. But Class Connects is really the only extra credit that there is. So coming to them, or if you can't make the test reviews, watching the recording, you can get extra credit that way too. And of course, there are tests in the class, and there will be a final at the end of the semester. Come get help, whether it's office hours or Skype or Camel. Do not be afraid to ask for help. And the third thing, expect to spend an hour to an hour and a half every day in chemistry. Plan that from the beginning. There will be a few lessons that you get done faster. It's like, okay, awesome, I got some extra time. But do not plan on a half hour because you're going to feel very overwhelmed. Plan on an hour to an hour and a half every day for chemistry. And this class is set up through Google, so it's a different format than your other classes. Hopefully this means no matter what programs you have on your computer, you should be able to access everything. In fact, a lot of these things you can access even from your smartphone or a tablet. Um, but if you have problems accessing anything, definitely let me know. 
And that's it for our first things first. So let's get going. Chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Welcome to chemistry, the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. As you study chemistry, you will learn that matter is composed of atoms, which combine to form new substances. Chemists have combined atoms in an almost infinite variety to produce substances that improve our lives, such as fabric. So the clothes you're wearing, that's because of chemistry. Fuel, the fact that you can ride in a car, the car and the gasoline, all chemistry. Medicine, chemistry. Plastic, chemistry. Pretty much anything you can think of has to do with chemistry. So the next thing that we want to do is make sure that we take notes. And I'm going to try my best to take the notes along with you because one of the difficult things in chemistry is not knowing what is important versus extremely important versus, oh, okay, that's just a little bit of a side note to understand what we're doing and okay, we're good. So next I'm gonna go to the notes page. So definitely whether you want to type your notes or whether you like to handwrite them in a notebook, hit pause right now in order to give yourself a chance to set up where you're going to keep all your notes. If you are going to do them in a notebook, great. You have a notebook that's only chemistry for the entire year. We will probably fill up a notebook, okay? Um, or if you'd rather type them up, that's fine. Get a folder set up on your computer so you know where to save it every single time so you have what you need. All right, so now that you have, you've hit pause if you needed to and you have that, now I'm going to go to the notes. So let's start our notes by titling them. We have our section, which is 1.01, .01, Semester Introduction Notes. And the first word that we want is chemistry. Chemistry is the study of matter and how it changes. The nice thing about these videos is you can hit pause whenever you want. So these are done through YouTube, so you should have a real easy time hitting pause and play, backing up, doing whatever you need to. Um, I'm expecting anything I write down on the notes page, you write down. So hit pause as you need to, write down, and I'm just going to kind of keep going from there. So next, if we look at our definition, we notice we have the word matter. Well, anytime you have a definition, you better know exactly what every single word in the definition means. So we better be sure we all have the same definition, and we are going to add the word matter. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. So hit pause for as long as you need to write that down. Now we have two words in there that we need to define, volume and mass. So I wrote down volume first. Volume is how much space an object takes up. Now mathematically, you might have done this in geometry class already. If you haven't, that's fine. But if you did, to find the volume of something, like a cube, do you remember the formula? Length times width times height. And if you don't or haven't learned that yet, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to help connect things to other things that you might have learned. Um, we're going to be doing a decent amount of math in chemistry class because that's part of explaining how chemistry works. And because of that, when we get certain words, we're also going to need to know their abbreviations so that when you get a story problem and it says solve for V, you know that V stands for volume. So volume is abbreviated V, and the unit for volume is liters, which is abbreviated L, and that's a lowercase L. I know, the font, it's hard to tell if it's a capital I or a lowercase L, but it's a lowercase L. Now, if you were going to the store and buying milk, you would probably buy one, what? One gallon of milk, right? So gallon is another unit of volume. It's how we measure how much space that amount of milk takes up. However, we actually do use liters a lot. Can you think of what you may drink that's not too good for you but oh so delicious? Yeah, soda pop. <laughs> for me, it's Mountain Dew. You may hear me refer to Mountain Dew once or twice this semester. It is my favorite. <laughs> and you can buy a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew. Because we're in science class, we are going to use the metric system of measuring, which means we will not be using gallons and pints and quarts and cups. Instead, we're going to be using liters. 
All right, so if we go back up to our definition of matter, we said matter is anything that has mass and volume. So it's anything that has mass and takes up space. Now we're going to talk about what mass is. Mass is how many atoms something is made of. A lot of times they say it's how much stuff something is made of. We want to be a little bit more precise than that, and we're going to say atoms, which in itself is like 99.8% true, but good enough for what we're doing. So mass is how much stuff you're made of, how many atoms you're made of. Mass is abbreviated lowercase m. And if you notice, V was capital. Sometimes we have capitals, sometimes we have lowercase. Because in science, lowercase v stands for velocity which you don't need to know. And capital M stands for momentum, which you also don't need to know. But I'm just showing you that the capital and lowercase actually does matter. So mass is abbreviated lowercase m. The unit for mass is grams. So if I would tell you to step on the scale and it said you weigh 150, what? Pounds, right? Well, in science class, we use the metric system. We do not say pounds. We're going to use grams and kilograms. So again, make sure you have all of this in your notes. Chemistry is the study of the composition and structure of matter, the stuff in the universe that has mass and volume, and the study of how matter changes. People study chemistry so they can make new products such as medicines, plastics, and fuels, and design new processes such as medical tests. People also study chemistry to figure out how and why matter changes and reacts to energy. In fact, whenever you are following a recipe, you are doing chemistry. In this unit, you will learn about matter and energy and how chemistry affects our lives. And these are crystals. Very pretty. Chemists invent new materials. This frying pan is coated with a plastic that prevents food from sticking to it while cooking. In 1938, chemists at DuPont combined atoms in a new way to make this non-stick plastic called Teflon. Teflon can resist many chemicals and heat. It is strong and has a nearly frictionless surface, so things slide right off. Teflon is used in many products, including plumbing tape, cookware, waterproof coating, films, and bearings. To fully understand how new, useful chemicals are made from existing ones, you must understand the principles or how chemistry works. This semester's lessons are designed to help you achieve that goal. Chemistry involves the study of matter and what it is made of. If you want to read through to everything we're going to do this semester, go ahead and hit pause and you can read this. Water has special properties. It can be solid, liquid, or gas on Earth's surface, and when it freezes, it floats, which is very rare for a frozen object. Chemistry helps you understand the properties of water. So we're going to talk a lot about water, too, and really how amazing it is. So again, if you want to see what else we're doing this semester, hit pause and read through it. Read through it. Chemists combine atoms to make new materials, such as fertilizer, which helps farmers increase the amount of food that they can grow. All right, so short lesson, but I want to make sure what you know what to do next. After every video lesson, do the worksheet. You can always use a calculator in this class. Use the worksheet as a pre-quiz. Be sure you can do everything without your notes. Yes, you can use your notes on the worksheet, but you may not use your notes on the quizzes or test. So don't use your notes and fill in the worksheet and be like, oh yeah, I got this, and then you put your notes away and you don't do well on the quiz. So make sure you fully understand everything on the worksheet and check your answers. After you do that, take the quiz. You may not use notes on the quizzes or tests. Check your quiz results. There are no retakes, but you need to know what is on the quiz to help you with later quizzes and tests. And if you are confused and want me to go over it, please, please come see me or Miss R. I can only help you if you ask for help. Chemistry takes time and persistence. As Red Green would say, we're all in this together. And I sincerely mean that, especially in applied chemistry. I am here to help you succeed. All right, so then you are going to go to the worksheet. And here's the link to get the worksheet and to check the answers. And then, of course, it says choose and follow what is true for you. So after the worksheet, make sure you read through these in order to do the next step. When you go to the worksheet, it explains right away 
that if you have Google, you can make a copy or you can download it if you want. Whatever way to do the worksheet, it's up to you. Bye.